Right, so this week uh, we'll be doing uh, the experiment of 11 AC circuits. So what are AC circuits? AC circuits are the, uh, uh, the circuit that, uh, that are powered by the alternative current uh, source. So uh, when, you, when you have an AC circuit, the, um, uh, the voltage will no longer be a constant. Instead, the, uh, the voltage will have uh, you know, a, is a time variable, meaning that the voltage will change uh, you know, with time. And usually we can uh, describe the, uh, the voltage as a function time with the uh, sine solo function. And here you have the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the voltage amplitude. And then you have the sine of alpha uh, omega. Omega is the angular frequency and then times time. So angular frequency is two pi times uh, the uh, the frequency, and then that's also equal to two pi over the periods. And so when we know that uh, the voltage is going to change with time, and we know that the current when the uh, when the uh, when the AC circuit only involves a resistor, then the uh, the current will also change with time. And how they change with time can be described like this. So we have the voltage over the uh, the resistance value. Then you have the amplitude, uh, um, uh, the current amplitude times sine of uh, omega t. So you can see that when you compare equation one and equation four, uh, they both uh, both the voltage and temp. Uh, I'm sorry, both the voltage and current. They are uh, they uh, what we call have the same phase, or they are in in phase because uh, in the sine sort of function. Uh, they, uh, they only have the omega times t, so they are called uh, in phase. Okay, so what about if, uh, if instead of uh, uh, having the uh, a resistor, now we're using a cap uh, a capacitor or an inductor? So that, for example, if you use an inductor uh, in the AC circuit, then the uh, the voltage across the inductor uh, can still be described by this. Uh, you know, uh, the voltage amplitude times sine of omega t. And the, uh, the, current, in, uh, the current in the circuit, uh, when, you, uh, when you have only an inductor, then it would be described like this, and this you're going to learn that in lecture. But, uh, you know, uh, when you look at this equation, you can see that uh, your current amplitude is basically equal to the voltage amplitude over uh, the angle frequency times the inductance value. And instead of us saying that it is uh, it is sine of omega t, now it's sine of omega t minus pi over two. So we can see that current and voltage, they are not in phase. And you can see that the current is actually uh, inside this argument when the, uh, the phase angle, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, you know, this one pi over two is the, uh, the phase angle uh, actually, uh, is the phase difference compared to uh, the voltage, which is so omega t compared to omega t minus p uh, mi minus pi over two. You can see that the current were uh, you know uh, is actually behind voltage by ninety degrees, and this is only when you having uh, a circuit with the only an inductor. So uh, this means that current lacks current lacks uh, the uh, the voltage. Now, if the circuit, instead having an inductor, we have a capacitor, then the voltage can, uh, can still be described by this, but the, uh, the current now becomes the, uh, the current amplitude times sine of omega t plus pi over two. So you can see that now the current, because this being positive value, the current now leads the voltage. So that, those are the characteristics uh, when you have an AC circuit uh, connected uh, when you have an AC circuit involves uh, a resistor, an inductor, or a capacitor alone. How the uh, how the voltage and current are in relation to each other. And the other thing that we uh, you're going to learn is that so for a resistor, the resistance of course is just R in the circuit. Now when you have a in, uh, the inductor, uh, the inductor itself will act. Uh, as a resistor, uh, and then there's an equivalent way to saying that there is a you know there's a resistance in this uh, in the circuit when you have a, a inductor, and this is different from the internal resistance of an inductor. Uh, and this is basically you know when you have current going through the inductor, it will create uh, some sort of resistance uh, you know uh, when passing through that. And how we define that is that uh, we use this symbol X uh, sub L, which is called the inductive reactance. 
uh, which is the uh, the frequency, angular frequency times the inductance value. So you can see that uh, the uh, inductive reactance is not just L, it's actually uh, omega times L, which is angular frequency dependent. So in other words, when you change, when you change the frequency, you'll find that the inductive reactance will be different. The larger the frequency, the larger the, induct, uh, the inductive reactance. And if you look at this, it will have the same units as the uh, resistance, which is, uh, which is in ohms. And then likewise, when, you, uh, when, when the circuit had the, um, only has a, a capacitor, then uh, we call uh, the capacitor itself will have, uh, will have a, a, a resistant equivalent uh, resistance. And that resistance is called capacitive reactance. And it's given by this expression, one over omega C. Omega, of course, is angular frequency and C is the capacitance. So you can see that the larger, just based on this value, the larger the frequency, the smaller the, uh, the capacitive reactance, okay? So those are the basic characteristics when you have an AC circuit involving only one electrical element. And, and, and so let's see. And when you draw the on um, this diagram, this uh, you know on the vertical is uh, on the ver let's see this is what we call the uh, the phaser diagram, and um, and you will find that basically it will just uh, describe the relationship between current and voltage. Now for a resistor, we know that they are in the same uh, in the same direction. Uh, they have the same uh, you know uh, argument uh, within the uh, the sign. So the, uh, the, the amplitude and current, they are in the same direction. Uh, you know, we treat it, we are uh, basically, we're treating them like a vectors and then they are pointing in the same direction with this, uh, you know, with this uh, uh, omega T. And then when it comes to, when it comes to an inductor, we know that uh, the, induct, uh, the inductor has, a, uh, you know, it's deeper, the, uh, the current and the current and the voltage, they have a difference by 90 degrees. And so the uh, so you have the uh, the current is pointing this way, and the uh, the voltage uh, points in that way. And this uh, tells you that the uh, the voltage will, will you know, the voltage leads the other uh, current, or the, uh, the other way to say it is that the current lacks the other uh, voltage, and they are perpendicular to each other. And when you have a, a, a induct, uh, I'm sorry, when you have a, a capacitor only. Then you have the voltage and then you have the current and they are the the uh, the the difference the uh, the angular difference is by ninety degrees and we know also know that because the uh, 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 it, it is uh, positive uh, ninety degrees so current uh, current leads the uh, the uh, the voltage so you can see that we pretty much uh, treat voltage and current like they are two vectors uh, on the phase uh, diagram okay. And so what about when, uh, you know, when you have a realistic AC circuit that involves a capacitor, a resistor, and an inductor? So then, uh, you know, your voltage, your voltage can still be described by the, uh, uh, the, uh, the M over uh, M times sine of omega T. But then your current now will have the expression of the current amplitude times sine of omega T uh, minus the phase angle. And so this phase angle is going to determine whether the, uh, the circuit is more inductive or is more uh, capacitive, meaning that if the uh, this thing minus, uh, if your, your phase angle is positive, if this uh, if this positive, it just means that uh, you know. So when you go back to, uh, to here, we can uh, rely on this. If uh, you know, if this is uh, you know, if the uh, if this thing, if this thing is positive, then of course the uh, you know it is a uh, uh, the current. Uh, is more capacitive because the current leads the voltage. Now, if this thing is uh, is negative, um, then you would expect that is more in, uh, inductive, and so uh, you know it is the um, uh, the current lacks the uh, the voltage, and that's how you determine you know uh, just based on the phase angle. And so when you have the uh, three electrical components uh, assembled in the AC circuit, uh, the voltage. Uh, across the resistor will still uh, bear this ex uh, expression. And the inductive uh, will have, uh, the voltage across the inductor will have this, and the, uh, the voltage across the capacitor will have this, okay? And so, uh, you know, so when you look at the, uh, uh, the voltage amplitude, 
the across the resistor will be the current amplitude to times uh, times r, and V L will be the current amplitude to times X L, and V C will be the current amplitude to times X C. Okay, that is basically just based on this. And so when you have that, so uh, so you can see that you both have the uh, the V R. There's a voltage drop across the resistor, voltage drop across the inductor and the capacitor. So what exactly is the voltage amplitude? So again, we're going to treat them as a as a uh, as a vector uh, in a way because um, they are in they have a phase difference. And when they are when sine and cosine they are perpendicular to each other, you can't add them together. So instead, you want to treat them as on the phase diagram that they are like. Uh, you know the x and y, something like that, or sine and, and cosine. So, 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 uh, so, uh, uh, in short, the voltage amplitude can be found by using equation fifteen, which is the the uh, the vo uh, the voltage uh, amplitude across the resistor square plus the voltage across the inductor square plus the voltage uh, across the capacitor square. Uh, I'm sorry, the difference difference and then the, the, the voltage difference uh, square, okay? It's not just the VR squared plus VL squared plus VC squared. That's not true. It, it should be VR squared plus the, the, the voltage difference of the L and C and square. And likewise, uh, you know, because the voltage and current, does, uh, when you substitute the V uh, with the uh, IR or RXL, RXC, then you will get this. So the current amplitude and the voltage amplitude are related by this. So you have the current number two times the square root of R squared plus the uh, XL minus XC squared. And so basically uh, this, uh, this, this diagram, uh, you know, is similar to what we just went over that, uh, you know, you have the, uh, if you had a VR that's in this direction, then VO and VC, they are in uh, perpendicular to R, but then uh, uh, they also each are in the opposite direction for the, uh, v, uh, for the L and C, okay? And so when we have the other uh, voltage amplitude, when we have the current amplitude, then we can, uh, we can find or define the other uh, total resistance of a circuit. Instead of calling that total resistance, we call that impedance. And we use the symbol Z to indicate that. So uh, the impedance Z of the circuit is then can be found by Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus XL minus XC squared. And then the angle, the phase angle, how do we find the phase, phase angle? Then uh, it can be calculated by using this equation. So the phase angle is inverse tangent of the uh, VL minus, uh, I'm sorry, XL minus XC over R. And it can also have an, uh, another expression, which uh, we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later, okay? So you have this. So these are the, uh, the basic uh, equations. And uh, you're probably going to use uh, a lot of them uh, so when you do sample calculation, uh, uh, you would need to write down the equation and the numbers that you use. And then the, uh, and the last line will be uh, the res your results. And so the, uh, the construction, the connections, the connections of the circuit is very easy. So you have the uh, a resistor, a capacitor, and then you have the inductor and you have the wire lead that connect the other uh, springs. And this, uh, you know, and this two are going to be connected to the, uh, the function generator. And these two are the pros. So um, that is connected to the uh, the oscilloscope. And from the oscilloscope, you, you'll be able to deduce the, uh, the voltage across each electrical element. So you're going to measure uh, the voltage across the resistor, the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the inductor, and also the voltage across the, uh, the resistor and the inductor and total voltage. The reason why we want to measure the voltage across the, uh, uh, that involves the, uh, the resistor and the inductor is that uh, sometimes the, um, uh, the resistance of, in, uh, of the inductor, the internal resistance of inductor is not negligible. So then we need to uh, uh, find out a way to, uh, to, uh, to find uh, the, the value of the internal resistance. And that internal resistance is different from the uh, uh, inductive reactance uh, that we uh, mentioned earlier, okay? All right, so, and so, uh, so using the Cisco, you know, basically uh, you would just know, uh, you would just use the, uh, uh, you would just count how many divisions, that's they pick to pick, how many divisions are there, and then, and then come, and then let's say if you have uh, in this case uh, a 8.8 8 .8 divisions, then uh, 
and then each division represents uh, on the dial. Uh, let's say it represents, uh, let's see the example that we have here. Uh, I think the example that we had is that, um, let's say you had A point A divisions counted from peak to peak, and then uh, each division, each, uh, each division represents 0 0.2 volts. Then the other uh, pick to pick voltage for each electrical element would just be uh, the, whatever setting that you had and multiply the number of division and that'll be this, uh, you know, this, uh, this is just an example, 1.76. And then it's not the uh, pick to pick value that we that we want. We want to get the uh, the peak value. So the peak value would just be half the size of the other uh, pick to pick. So you will use the same procedures to measure the voltage across the resistor. Uh, the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the uh, the inductor, and, and so forth. Okay, so uh, let's see. So for the analysis, of course, you just want to go through the analysis because one of the things that we want to do is that we want to determine uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, the uh, the v there's called the VL experiment and VL real. Experiment, experimental value, of course, is what you measured, but then, uh, you know, there's an internal res resistance that, that is involved, that is present. And uh, so we need to figure out what is the value of the voltage across that internal resistance uh, across the, uh, uh, when you have the inductor. And so, and that's what we call the VL, uh, after taking into account the VR, and then a v, uh, ex the experimental that you go, then you can uh, infer, we can calculate or estimate um, the other VR and also VL real, okay? And so here it just tells you, you know, the number one thing is to find out the current amplitude and, and to find the current amplitude, this is the equation to use. And then, uh, and then uh, you wanna find the uh, XC. And so this is the equation to use. And then a capacitor would be this equation to use, okay? And then you just follow the steps and then here more equations for you to use. And uh, just based on this diagram, that might be a little bit, uh, I don't know how complicated you think it is, but if you know your trigonometry well, then you'll be able to know that, um, that uh, this value, the experimental value of uh, voltage across the inductor is basically related to all this quantity by this equation, which is the VLR, this, uh, this guy square, and then plus the, uh, this guy square, and then minus uh, two times this times that, and then cosine alpha. And, and then, uh, so that is, is how you figure out this, this things, okay? The, uh, the main show of that one. And then once you have that one, and then just based on this, uh, you know, uh, triangle, then you'll be able to uh, figure out the, uh, the angle, which is inverse, uh, 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 inverse cosine of uh, the VLR squared plus VLR squared uh, minus this, and then times that, and then divided by this too. And then, um, and then, uh, and then once you figure out the uh, the uh, the angle alpha, then uh, then this will become uh, rather easy because um, that would just be uh, the VLR, uh, this one, this one times sine of the uh, you know the uh, alpha. So that's basically how you deduce the uh, uh, the real voltage across the uh, the inductor. And then you're going to find the XL, which you use this equation, and then the L, you use this equation, okay? And then, uh, and then the, uh, and then you're going to figure out the, uh, uh, the voltage, uh, the voltage due to, uh, the voltage across uh, the internal resistance, which is the uh, VL, VLR times cosine alpha minus VR, and then, um, and then your R, the internal resistance, will just be V. Uh, once you figure out the VR, then Use this equation to figure out the uh, the low case R, and then Z is this equation, and the VT, uh, the total voltage, uh, is then this. So you can see that uh, you know so this, so so uh, instead of just having, so you can see that you know comparing this this expression, this three expression to the previous uh, one, like the uh, the voltage the voltage here and the, uh, the, the impedance here, basically they are uh, equivalent to that. It's just that now we have to take, in, uh, take the uh, internal resistance into account. So uh, the total impede, uh, the impedance would now be uh, the, uh, the, res uh, the external resistance plus the internal resistance. And then you have uh, you know, this 
and then the voltage will be Vr plus V low case R, and then uh, and then you're using the V uh, real minus Vc because this they are in the same phase. Okay, and the uh, the phase angle have have two expression. Uh, one is this and one is that. Okay, so you can see that uh, there's a lot of uh, calculations uh, yeah, to be done for this experiment and. Um, that just tells you that when you have an L, uh, LRC AC circuit, uh, you know these are the uh, components to uh, to consider. And so this, uh, so this is just the uh, you know oscilloscope, uh, okay, and generator, right? So um, I want to show you. Uh, so this is the uh, the table. Let me share the the data. So uh, the data looks like this. So the resistance, in external resistance is 10.061 uh, ohm, capacitance is 96.96 96 .96 microfarad, micro is 10 to the minus six, inductance is 8.063 millihenry, milli is 10 to the negative third. And you are given three, um, three frequencies. Remember, you know, uh, when you have an AC circuit, uh, the voltage, uh, the the quantity involves the um, uh, inductance and capacitor. And capacitor. They all uh, they uh, they are all frequency dependent. Okay, and so um, um, so you have the three uh, you have three frequencies, but we'll just be doing we'll just be doing eighty five and two sixty uh, two sixty five. So you don't have to do the one hundred eighty. And when you do a sample calculation, you just need to show one frequency. And uh, so the VT total frequencies, uh, total uh, voltage is given uh, 2.1 uh, and then 1.75. Uh, the voltage across the, uh, uh, the inductor, we call that uh, experimental value is 0.77 and 1.6. VR is 1.04 and then uh, 1.02. VLR, which is across the uh, uh, Resistor and inductor is 1.62.0, and VC is 1.8 and 0.6. So even though the data you're given three values, uh, uh, you're given value for three frequencies, you just need to do uh, the one for 85 and do the one for 280, uh, 265, and show your sample calculation using the value for 85. Okay. So you need to calculate the current number two, calculate XC, calculate C, and then compare. And then this percent uh, percent uh, error is comparing the C value to uh, the C value that you're given. And then uh, and then alpha, of course, you have to use the equation which just went over, and then uh, and then go through that whole process of uh, deduce, deducing the the real uh, voltage across the inductor. And then calculate XL, and then calculate your L, and then compare to, and then your uh, calculate the L. You're going to compare to this 8.063 millihenry, and then find the percent error. Okay, and then, and then, uh, and then you're going to calculate the 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 voltage across the internal resist the resist uh, resistor, and you have calculate uh, in further uh, resistance value, and then calculate impedance, calculate V total. Once you calculate your V total. Then you can compare to the V total you're given here to in order to calculate the percent error. Okay, and then for uh, the phase angle, you can calculate uh, from the voltage and from the impedance, and basically they both are experimental values. So uh, to find the percent error, just uh, just use the uh, uh, just find the difference and divide it, uh, div uh, and then. Uh, and then in the denominator, use the larger value of this true value to calculate your percent error. Okay, um, that just give you uh, you know like uh, to find the we don't have a, a really uh, you know either one of them can be a reference, but usually we you we will use the larger value as a reference. All right, and so you do not you do not and then uh, you know uh, in the lab packet uh, you know lab activity shows the uh, the phase of diagram and all that stuff. You do not. I have to do that. Um, you just need to do the calculation for two frequencies and show the sample calculation for one frequency. Okay, so that's basically what you are going to do.